Hello, you are watching News Mongolia on MNB World. I am your host, Jugdir Gambold. And for our top stories. Irtni said Huntla joined the company to be registered at the Metals Exchange. Updates on the latest bribery and corruption case. Mongolia's first digital museum is dedicated to mining industry. For the news, stay tuned. Parliament's Standing Committee on the Economy convened on Tuesday. The main topic of the discussion were the shares of Ernest Huntla joined the campaign. Notably, members of the Standing Committee proposed registering Ernest Huntla at the Metals Exchange and distributing dividends. The Standing Committee members considered that Parliament should give some directions to the Cabinet on raising the profitability of the ETT shares alongside issuing a resolution on the mining exchange law. Members of the Standing Committee highlighted that Irdin's Town Tadroy joint stock company should provide dividends to citizens. In 2019, dividends to the value of 700 billion MNT should have been distributed, but I remember 40 to 50 billion MNT dividends were not distributed. The dividends for the last three years must be distributed to citizens, am I right? I absolutely agree, and in addition, we should increase the profitability of the 1,072 shares that are owned by citizens. In addition, 1 million children have been born since 11th April 2012, so we should provide them with shares as well. We can see from the latest events that large amounts of money are circulating among just few groups of people, while at the same time citizens haven't received their dividend in the last few years. We should add some articles regarding the reimbursement of the past two years, 2021 and 2022 dividends. The Standing Committee on the Economy agreed that calculations should be made in order to reimburse dividends for the last two years and the results to be introduced during the session of Parliament. In addition, some members of Parliament note that registering ETT at the Metals Exchange will improve the company's governance. Moreover, some members voiced a proposal that the Metals Exchange should meet all international standards, use the latest innovative technologies and implement good management. All major exchange markets are already introducing blockchain technology and introducing their applications for smartphones. For example, the LME or the London Metals Exchange. So we should include in the resolution a proposal on blockchain technology, preferably launched by our domestic companies. Of course, we need a metals exchange. It is really important. From the other side, we should remember that it is pretty dependent upon the expert of mining products, so they should continue without a break. Members of the Standing Committee concluded that the draft proposal on laws for the Serene Wealth Fund and on transparency for the extracting industry should be drafted as soon as possible and submitted to Parliament for further discussion. A mid-level official of the Ulaanbaatar Railway joint venture company was involved in a crime related to large amount of money. On Tuesday, the police office held a press briefing to provide the latest updates related to this case. Notably, the search was conducted at the mid-level official of the Ulaanbaatar Railway joint venture company Patul's house on January 5th. During the investigation and search, four different currencies with a total value of 7.3 billion Mongolian Tugriks or 2 million US dollars were discovered at his house. Notably, there was around 1.5 million US dollars, 548,000 RMB and 54,000 euros, 1.4 billion Mongolian Tugriks in cash, as well as a contract for real estate worth 4 billion Mongolian Tugriks. Police Lieutenant Colonel Ganchotlo, head of the Economic Crimes Department of the Criminal Police Service, said that the investigation is ongoing and that the suspect has been detained for one month. The police didn't mention how many people and how many companies are being interrogated in connection with this case. In connection to the latest event, the prosecutor's office has created a case related to money laundering, bribery and unjust enrichment. Meanwhile, the Lambata Railway joint venture company on Tuesday issued a statement 
where it was said that the event damaged the reputation of Ulaanbaatar Railway JVC and damaged the reputation of all honest railway workers. The statement continues that 7.3 billion Mongolian Tugruks found in the residence of the accused Batutol is not money earned by misappropriating the transport income of Ulaanbaatar Railway JVC. Let's uh, take a look at the current affairs of Mongolia. Mongolia's first digital museum is operating in Irdenet. The museum project was launched in 2020 to preserve the historical development of the Irdenet mining industry as a valuable heritage. The museum has six halls, including mining of Mongolia, electronic information, historical trajectory, industrial and technological innovations, socially responsible industry, and our pride. These halls feature more than 200 video programs, more than 1,000 exhibits, around 160 books, as well as tangible and intangible heritage related to the 40-year history research and development of the Irdent Mining Corporation. Visitors can get acquainted with the mining excavator and the factory floors. They will be able to experience the explosion of the carry with the help of vibrating smart floor with a 270-degree view. Now let's uh, look at the currency exchange rates provided by Mongol Bank. Welcome back. You've been with News Mongolia on MNB World. Now here comes a foreign news partnered with international news agencies. The U.S., Canadian and Mexican foreign ministries signed a joint declaration on racial equality on Monday on the sidelines of North American leaders' talks in Mexico City. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, Mexico Foreign Affairs Minister Marcelo Ebrard and Canada Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie attended the signing ceremony. This declaration is a historic step in our work to eradicate deep and deep-seated injustice. Diversity is a fact, but inclusion is a choice. How we choose to incorporate the diversity of our communities can mean the difference between a stagnant and thriving country and, and continent. In every nation, members of marginalized groups face discrimination. They face barriers that prevent them from participating fully in society. It's a daily reality for people from indigenous communities and communities of African descent, women and girls, LGBTQI plus people, people with disabilities, religious minorities and others including in the United States. With this declaration, each of our nations acknowledges the responsibility to work with fierce urgency to knock down these enduring barriers and to try to stamp out the prejudice at their root. The Declaration of the North American Alliance for Inclusion and Racial Equality aims at promoting social diversity, equity and inclusion in the three countries. Ebrar highlighted the deep-rooted issue of racism in the country. There has been a great effort to dismantle the culture of racism. It's not an easy topic, but this is a fight that we all must take on every day, he said. Japan's uh, Prime Minister Kishida Fumio says his country will work closely with France on the Group of Seven Summit to be held in Hiroshima this coming May. Kishida said he wants the summit to be a venue where G7 nations express their resolve to uphold a free and open international order based on the rule of law. Kishida also said the meeting will give Japan and its G7 partners a chance to show their commitment to strengthening strict sanctions on Russia over its invasion of Ukraine, as well as strong support for Ukrainians. On the security front, Kishida said Japan will promote cooperation with France through joint drills and other measures amid an increasingly strained security environment. 
He said the security of Europe and that of the Indo-Pacific region are inseparable. He noted that attempts to change the status quo by force have been intensifying in the East China and South China Seas. Kishida said his government will call for two plus two talks between the foreign and defense ministers of Japan and France by mid-2023 to deepen security cooperation. Last month, Japan revised its national security strategy. At least 13 people died Monday in Southeast Peru as protests seeking immediate elections resumed in neglected rural areas of the country, still loyal to outside President Pedro Castillo. Peru's top human rights agency called for an investigation into the deaths, 12 of which took place amid clashes between security forces and protesters attempting to seize control of an airport in the city of Juliaca, near the border with Bolivia. It was the highest death toll since the unrest began in early December following Castilla's removal and arrest following a widely condemned attempt to dissolve Congress and head off his own impeachment. Among the 12 killed in Juliaca was a 17-year-old, according to news reports. A 13th person died in the nearby city of Chucuito, where protesters blocked a highway. Castillo's successor, his former running mate Dina Boluarte, has supported a plan to push up to 2024 elections for president and Congress, originally scheduled for 2026. She has also expressed support for judicial investigations into whether security forces acted with excessive force, but such moves have so far failed to curl the unrest which after a short respite around the Christmas and New Year's holidays have resumed with force in some of Peru's poorest areas, where support for Castilla's unorthodox rule had been strongest. Nationwide protests were reported in about 13 percent of Peru's provinces on Monday, many of them consisting of roadblocks making it impossible for truckers to deliver produce to market. With Monday's casualties, the number of people killed in clashes with security forces climbed to 34. Hundreds more have been treated for injuries. <laughs> now let's uh, take a look at the regular feature on the sports. Novak Djokovic and women's world number two, Jan Sieber, and six other players will form the first executive committee of the controversial Professional Tennis Players Association. The breakaway organization was first unveiled in 2020 by Djokovic and others, a move which divided the sport. The PTPA wants to increase the power of the players, taking it away from the current bodies, the ATP and WTA. Co-founder Vasek Pospisil will also be in the first executive committee. The Canadian will be joined by Hubert Hurkacz and Paula Spadosa, both ranked 11th in the respective rankings. Americans John Isner and Bethany Metek Stent, plus China's Zheng Saisai. Djokovic, a winner of 21 Grand Slam titles and one of the sport's biggest names, resigned as president of the ATP Player Council to front the PTPA, an organization which was criticized for originally only including male players. Djokovic said he believed the new organization and ATP could coexist, adding that they were not calling for boycott or parallel tours. It wanted to give players a greater voice on various matters. In recent years, players have agitated for a greater share of the revenue generated by the Grand Slams in particular. The ATP and WTA currently have equal representation of players and tournaments. The PTPA's executive committee will be officially unveiled before next week's Australian Open. Djokovic said last week he hoped more players would recognize the potential of the PTPA, adding this association needs to live. A set of guiding principles are set to be announced next week. Five-time Champions League winner and Welsh football icon Gareth Bale has retired at the age of 33. The forward announced his decision on social media Monday, saying the game had given him some of the best moments of my life. After careful and thoughtful consideration, I announced my immediate retirement from the club and international football, he wrote. I feel incredibly fortunate to have realized my dream of playing the sport I love. Bell started his career in England with Southampton, but made his name to at Tottenham before signing for Real Madrid for a then world record fee in 2013. He won three La Liga titles in Spain in addition to 45 trophies in the Champions League as he dovetailed a frightening forward line alongside Cristiano Ronaldo and Karim Benzema. After a brief loan spell back at Tottenham, Bell signed for Major League Soccer team Los Angeles FC in 2022. 
He retired as Wales' most capped men's player with 111 appearances and led his nation to the first World Cup in 64 years at Qatar 2022. Bell scored a plethora of remarkable goals during his career, including a stunning overhead kick during the Champions League final against Liverpool in 2018. At his best, Bell's pace, power and eye for a long-reach goal made him one of the best players in the world. Injuries began to hamper his form in recent years, but Bale always managed to show up for Wales. The talisman led his country to Euro 2016 and 2020, reaching the semi-finals in the former. But his dream was to always play in the World Cup and he did so in Qatar, captaining his side and scoring his country's first World Cup goal since 1958 against the US. Bale finished his 16-year career at LAFC, scoring a dramatic late goal to help the team win the Major League Soccer Cup for the first time in November 2022. Now let's uh, look at the weather forecast for the world's major cities. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for staying tuned. We'll see you next time with more news and updates. Have a good day.